Uh, this question from question generated by Jensen Huang AI. Uh, <laughs> good morning, DF Crew! Exclamation point. There have been a lot of conversations about what a new PlayStation or Xbox console would be like if it used an NVIDIA GPU instead of an AMD GPU. What is the likelihood of something like that even happening? NVIDIA doesn't have an x86 license and game consoles moved away from separate CPU and GPU dies two console generations ago for cost and power savings. In addition, both Microsoft and Sony have used NVIDIA GPUs in their consoles at some point in the past, but seem to have shown no interest in doing so again. What would need to change for a theoretical NVIDIA-powered PlayStation or Xbox to happen? Uh, well, a lot of things, I think. Um, just quickly, uh, moving to an ARM-based architecture would effectively remove the x86 requirement that's, that's kind of present in the uh, current generation machines. Um, but beyond that, I think it is you know just a question of the kind the type of deal that they could actually negotiate with Nvidia, who to be fair don't really need this kind of deal. You know they're already like hugely successful, uh, whereas AMD you know historically has needed that kind of deal. Um, John, it's not really much like I mean it, we kind of wish it would happen simply because they've got the best features and and a cutting edge silicon, but realistically mm. nvidia in an xbox uh or it, especially a playstation less likely to happen right yeah they've gone too far down the specific path and i think things like backwards compatibility have become prioritized and breaking that uh is not something that they want to do and i believe that's exactly the kind of thing they would run into if they were to take sort of like the more arm-based approach uh like nintendo did with the switch uh, which is what you'd probably get if they went with NVIDIA, right? So um, even though it, it would be interesting to see, and I would like to see what would happen if they took this path, I just don't feel like it's all that likely unless they're willing to do more of a clean break or sacrifice this, like, just full backwards compatibility thing. Because, I mean, they can't really do, like, the old method, right? Like, backwards compatibility compatibility on playstation 2 for instance or ps or the early ps3s relied on additional bespoke hardware from the prior generation machines essentially being factored into the mainboard design and realistically you can't do that <laughs> that would be insane and expensive to have like an amd soc in there just to handle backwards compatibility or something or like offload part of it to something like that so and I mean, I think, would you guys agree that backwards compatibility has become like a very important thing, especially in this digital age? And they probably don't want to break from that in any significant way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's entirely the case. And that's basically, well, Phil Spencer's on the record as basically saying they lost the only generation that really mattered, which was the Xbox One, PlayStation 4 era, where the concept of building a digital library became so important that, you know, Realistically, those people who had a sizable Xbox digital library moved on to Series S and X, and PlayStation, which had a much more sizable uh, uh, user base with digital libraries, moved on to PlayStation 5. So, yeah, basically, it's of crucial importance. So, the concept of, and I think there was that, Oliver, correct me if I'm wrong, there was that um, news story recently that um, Intel were pitching for PlayStation 6. Yes. And um, eventually it was like, well, AMD just proved to be the more logical choice. Do you have any thoughts on this topic? Yes, I think that story is uh, quite relevant here because I think at the moment the calculus isn't quite there, which is evidenced by the fact that Sony was choosing between AMD and Intel and not NVIDIA or Qualcomm or AMD or Intel, right? They were choosing between x86 manufacturers that would be able to presumably give them that x86 architecture and uh, some some level of backwards compatibility support. Um, but I think here with some of the better ARM CPU designs, in particular Orion, that single core performance is, is finally there. So I think that like in the past, it would be tough for a home console project just because when you're looking at like potentially a Zen design versus a typical ARM Snapdragon chip that you could buy 
um, or a typical ARM, just a CPU license that you could get. Um, it was not really competitive. Now it's more competitive, so that's more interesting. But I think, yeah, backwards compatibility is a key issue. And I think it's it's just a matter of, of risk, ultimately. Like, do you want to go with NVIDIA? Do you want to lose x86? Do you want to probably lose backwards compatibility? Do you maybe want to be losing even some CPU performance relative to what you could get on um, an AMD design or an Intel design? I think at the moment the calculus is probably not quite there, but I could see it in the future, you know, depending on how things shake out. I could see that being different in five years and 10 years. Yeah, we saw in the FTC leak that uh, Microsoft were choosing uh, or at least considering ARM based CPUs for their next right. generation console. And that is pretty much the main thing, I think, compatibility wise, that they would need to solve uh, moving from, you know, a potential. Uh, and uh, AMD based SOC to um, the NVIDIA. But, you know, I just think the the way things are going at the moment, all of the things that question generated by Jensen Wong AI pointed out here, you know, these guys have worked with NVIDIA before and they've never gone back. So, yeah, I mean, we've got Nintendo now, which, which seems to be a pretty happy partnership, but uh, it seems to be AMD all the way.